Hello there, my name's Scott, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the SX Ray from JD Tech. Now, I've received this directly from the manufacturer, but it does have a Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash JD Tech 168. Or if you're in America, you can go along to dragonsdenvapor.com. Before I start, I must point out I did receive it free of charge for purpose of conducting a review, but my opinion of the product remains true on its network as always. Okay, let's go straight ahead and show you in a bit more detail. Okay, so before we start, here's a few screenshots just to show you some of the technical details. Okay, so this is the SX Ray by JD Tech, and it's a dual 18650 mod that uses the SX350J V2 electronics. Now, when I first got this device, it would go up to 150 watts, but Yee He have recently released a firmware update, and it can now go up to 200 watts. It's made out of hybrid Australian red gum wood, so that means you have a mixture of these nice natural wood blended in with this uh, acrylic. And with regards to the dimensions, it's 95 millimeters in length, 61 millimeters in width, and 31 millimeters in depth. With regards to the aesthetics, I like it, but I don't like it. It's quite hard to explain. There's just something about it that really does um, or doesn't sort of float my boat, but then there's other aspects that I do really like. I like the Australian red gum wood, but I'm not overly keen on these sort of acrylic parts. Um, I'm also not overly keen on the shape. As you can see, it's not a, um, a typical oblong shape. We do have a slanted top and bottom, which means when you stand it upright, you know, it is also slanted as well. Um, and I think it needs a little bit of stainless steel for, my, for me personally anyway because the, uh, the frame is made out of um, anodized aluminium, and as you can see, it's black in color. I think if that was stainless steel, it just helped to brighten up the whole device personally. But you know, it's not bad looking, but just not my cup of tea personally. Now, with regards to the build quality, again, it's a little bit of a mixed bag here, really, because there's some aspects that are really good, and there's some aspects which I feel let it down a little bit slightly. I want to sort of quickly talk about those negatives, get those out of the way, and then we can carry on with the rest of the review. Okay, so the negatives that I'm going to point out here, you know, they are quite small. It could be classed as being a little bit overly nitpicky. However, you know, if you're a person who's going to be paying out over $400 for something, you know, I feel it's only fair that I do point out these uh, little uh, sort of negatives that I've encountered because, you know, $400 is a fair old amount of Wonga. Okay, so on this side, as you can see, where the metal uh, base meets the frame, it's really nice and flush. There's no sort of gaps or uh, little sort of steps there whatsoever. But go over onto this side, and you do notice a quite sizable step. Now, I say sizable, it's probably half a millimetre, something like that. But, you know, it's, you, you, well, you can see it visually there quite clearly, and you know, can really feel it with your finger as well. So if they can get it nice and flush on this side, then they should be able to do the same thing on the opposite side as well. Now my second negative may be quite hard to pick up on camera and it's to do with some areas of the acrylic. Now I've got uh, a few other hybrid mods that use a mixture of these sort of acrylic and exotic woods. And the acrylic on those is very sort of rich and dense and you can't see through it whatsoever. Whereas on here though, in certain areas, the acrylic just appears to be almost completely see-through. So see-through, in fact, that if you look right next to my finger now there, you can see lots of little sort of uh, black speckles. And it may appear as though it's part of the actual design, but it isn't. That is where the glue is adhering the panel to the black frame. So, again, for me, just not good enough on the mod of this sort of price range. Now, my last slight criticism is to do with this tiny little area right next to my finger now. Now, if you take a look at the wood, you can see you do have these uh, little natural markings. You've got some up the top there and a few more down here. And that I don't mind whatsoever because it's natural and it's actually part of the wood itself. However, there's a tiny little area here which I think is, uh, I think it's actually been damaged and it's then been filled in with some clear acrylic. You may not be able to notice it too much on this side, but if I spin this around, you can see it uh, sticks out like a sore thumb. And if I run my finger behind it, you can see just how clear it actually is. So once you've got your atomizer attached, no, you don't notice it, but nevertheless, it shouldn't really be like that in the first place. 
Right, so moving on, let's start talking about some of the features of the SX Ray. And starting from the top, you can see here you have the JD Tech Company logo nicely engraved into the anodized aluminium. And then next that you have the 510 threaded connection. Now, even though it is a 510 connection, it's not going to be compatible with all your 510 atomizers, unfortunately. And that's due to the uh, sort of sunken design. And by that, I mean, when you screw your atomizer on, the base of the atomizer is actually going to be seated inside the device itself. And this area is 23 millimeters in diameter. So realistically, any atomizer over 22.5 mils is simply not going to fit. As you can see here, on this side, it's quite deep, probably around sort of four, four millimeters, whereas on the opposite side, maybe around sort of 1.5 millimeters, and that's due to the uh, slanted top. And also, it has a fixed center pin. So you may be thinking, well, if it's a fixed center pin, how are you going to get rid of your gaps, etc.? But just bear in mind, it is a sunken design, so all those gaps will get hidden once your atomizer is screwed on. The main body is made up of an anodized aluminium frame. Hopefully you can make it out there. And then from there you have four panels which have been attached to it. You have two side panels, you then have the rear back panel, and then finally you have the front panel which has all your buttons, your screen, USB, etc. And I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a second. Now one of the uh, side panels is going to be removable, and right down the bottom here you have a little uh, sort of notch that's been cut out. This allows you to get your fingernail underneath it, in order to remove the magnetic battery door and gain access to the battery bay. It uses two 18650 batteries wired up in series. Have a little bit of a ribbon here to help remove them. And the battery bay itself, you know, very nice and uh, neatly done. You can see some electronics there. I don't think that's uh, too much of a big deal personally. But the actual bay itself, like I said, nice and neat. And it gives you a very clear sort of uh, indicators as to where your batteries need to be installed. So positive to positive and the negative to negative on that side. Fold that over, then grab hold of the magnetic battery door and just slide that back into place. And then on the base, you're gonna find some engraving or laser etching which says SX Ray. And it's also gonna tell you your serial number. I'm holding it upside down, sorry. And you can see it's uh, number two out of 200 and only 200 of these will ever be made. At the top of the front panel, you're going to find the main fire button. And this is what you're going to press to activate your atomizer, gain access to the menu, make changes, lock the device, etc., etc. And it's quite a nice switch to use or button. It's more practical, if anything, though, I feel. There's nothing uh, too fancy about it. And it does sit slightly below the main body, so it doesn't protrude whatsoever. The screen itself, absolutely brilliant. I really do like the uh, SX350J screen. Lots of information there. And one feature I really do like is the fact that it automatically rotates as you turn the device over. Just below the screen, you're going to find your up and down buttons. Again, nothing sort of too fancy here, just practical buttons that work well. Again, seated slightly below the main body and just have a uh, slight sort of tactile feel to them. And then underneath those buttons, you're going to find the USB port. And this is for making your firmware updates and also allows you to make changes if you're going to be using the software. Okay, so I just want to go back and talk a little bit more about the screen, some of the features and the menu system. But before I do that, I just want to point out that Yeehee do offer a piece of software which allows you to come up with custom curves and custom profiles, etc. But to be honest, that side of vaping doesn't really appeal to me that much. I'm not going to sort of try and bluff my way through it. Plus, the uh, software they provide is only available for Windows and I am a Mac user. Now I've got an old Windows laptop which I used to upgrade the firmware uh, so I can go up to 200 watts. And I did uh, download the software and have a little play around with it, but um, I found it to be quite unintuitive and quite a frustrating experience. So I'm not gonna cover that side of things, unfortunately. But if you do a quick search on YouTube, there's probably thousands of videos covering it in a lot more detail than what I can ever do. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about some of the things that I like, some of the features, and like I said, the menu system as well. So on the screen, it gives you lots of really good information. It's going to let you know what your current wattage is set to. It's going to give you a visual indicator of your battery life. Underneath that, it's going to tell you what your actual remaining voltage is. So at the moment, it's saying it's 7.9 volts, which may seem high, but just bear in mind, it's a dual 18650 battery, or dual 18650 mod, should I say and the batteries are wired up in series. 
It's then going to let you know what the resistance of your coil is. So it's reading 0.41 ohms. And above that, it's going to tell you how many volts are going to be pushed through that coil in order to create that wattage output. In the lower corner there, you can see the word standard. And this is one of the five basic power options. And these are going to access by pressing the down button. If I go through to the first one, you have eco, then you have soft, and standard, powerful, and powerful plus. Now in eco mode, it's going to limit you to 40 watts and also turn off a few other features. And this will give you the best battery life. In soft mode, it's going to be a slow ramp up time to whatever wattage you got it set to. In standard mode, it should give you your wattage sort of straight off the bat. And then in powerful and powerful plus modes, it's going to give you a bit of a boost. And they're quite handy if you've got a coil set up which has a really slow ramp up time. So if you're using coils that seem to take sort of three or four seconds before they actually reach the uh, required temperature, put it into powerful or powerful plus mode, gives it a nice little boost and it's going to be a, a far better vape. Now you do also have these other options, which is going to be SXIQ, S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. And again, these are all done via the eScribe software. Now just next to my thumbnail, you can hopefully see that it says M1. And this is because you have five basic memory bank options. And to gain access to those, you're going to press the up button. And from there you can cycle through. So you have one, two, three, four, and five. And as you can see, I do have number five set to 200 watts. So if I go back to number one, press the fire button. And that's it, all the information here with regards to the wattage and what sort of a power mode I want to use will be stored in memory bank one. Now let's say, for example, I want to change the wattage in memory bank one, but I don't want to go into the menu system. All you need to do is press the up button then hold the down button. And then from there you can make any changes. Leave it there, press the fire button. And I see it's now changed and stored in memory bank one. If you want to lock the device, so say for example you're carrying it around in your pocket and you're worried about accidental activation, all you need to do is tap the fire button three times. And see it's now locked. And to unlock it again, just tap the fire button three times. If you want to enter the menu system, you're going to tap the fire button quickly five times. And then from there, further clicks will cycle you through the various options and you press the up or down button to make any changes. The first one is going to be for the operation mode. You have a choice of advanced or novice. If you choose novice, the up and down buttons simply increase or decrease your wattage and you don't have to worry about memory banks or custom profiles. Next option is for your configuration mode. So if you've been playing around with the software and come up with custom profiles, you can select it here. You can then increase or decrease your wattage, exit from the menu, turn the system on or off. So if you choose off, it will actually shut down the device completely. Then have your link on or off. If you're connected to a PC, this needs to be set to on. Then have your display auto right or left. If you leave on auto, it means as you rotate the device, the screen will automatically rotate with it, and that's my preferred choice. Then have your power or joules mode, joules being the uh, sort of temperature control side of things. And if you select joules, you then open up a further options for uh, changing between Fahrenheit and Celsius, changing the temperature, entering the temperature coefficient, etc., etc. You can then have one for your sensor on or off. Uh, I personally would leave it to off because uh, if it's on, it means as you tilt the device, you can actually make changes. And I found it to be a right pain in the ass. And then you're back to the start with the operation mode. So I'm just going to exit out of that by going to the exit option, pressing the up button, and I see you now back to the start. Okay, so that was the SX Ray by JD Tech. So let's go ahead and see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the SX Ray, and what do now is go ahead and show action. So I'm going to be using it with a Conqueror atomizer. I've got a dual coil build in there. The total combined resistance is reading 0.61 ohms, and I'm going to be vaping it at 50 watts. And the juice I'm using is a homebrew DIY mix. Um, not really too sure how to describe it. It's sort of like a strawberry sherbet type flavor. It's six milligram strength and VG based. Okay, so this is the SX Ray.
Okay, so as you can see, getting uh, plenty of vapour out of it. Like I always say, though, just bear in mind that the amount of vapour you're going to get will come down to what sort of atomizer you stick on the end of it, the resistance of your coil, uh, the type of coils you're using, the airflow, the type of e-liquid, your wattage settings. All these things do play a very big part in our vapour production, but, you know, with this set up here, getting tons of vapour. Okay, so um, let's get those uh, little negatives uh, out of the way to start off with. Now, with the aesthetics, obviously beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You know, I'm not blown away by the aesthetics. I think it's quite a nice looking mod, but it's not, for me, it hasn't got that wow factor. Let's put it that way. Now, I will say, though, that uh, I've seen quite a few photographs of people who have purchased one. You know, they've been posting their pictures on Instagram, and I've seen... Um, there's like a whole, I can't remember who actually posted the photo, it may have been JD Tech themselves actually, but there's a whole sort of big photo of like tons of them on display. And the ones on in, the, in that image, some of them were really gorgeous looking because the wood was a far lighter colour and there's a lot more wood than, than acrylic. And those ones really stuck out for me and I thought, you know, those ones look so much nicer than the one I've got here. But like I said, you know, different people are going to like different things. For me... The one I've got in my hand doesn't float my boat. It's quite a nice looking device, but um, it doesn't blow me away in the old looks department, let's put it that way. Now, those little negatives, you know, they are quite small negatives, but it's an expensive device. It's, I think it's $420 or something like that. So, you know, definitely not in the, uh, the cheap bracket. And for that sort of price, you expect it to be, you know, well, perfect really, because it's a lot of money. So, you know, the first little negative was, you know, at the base here, there is that little step. Doesn't affect it in any way whatsoever, apart from visually, obviously. You know, it still stands perfectly upright, you know, when you put it on your desk, but, you know, it is noticeable. Uh, the other one was that little tiny, um, it's like a little area of the wood is missing. Maybe the actual wood itself had a little sort of hollow point now, and it looks like it's been sort of filled in with some sort of clear, like, resin or something, because you can sort of see through it. Um, like, well, you can only really see through it if you take the take the atomizer out, then look down from where, like, where the atomizer is actually sitting. But again, you know, an expensive device, it shouldn't really be like that. And the other one is that, you know, the acrylic part of it, you know, I quite like the acrylic mods, but the acrylic on this one just seems to be a little bit sort of too see-through um, for my liking personally. And it's so see-through in certain patches that you can actually see where the panel is sort of glued onto like the anodized aluminium frame. So, you know, those things, you know, definitely do let it down um, in the build quality department. And it's it's a shame, really, because JD Tech, I've reviewed quite a lot of their stuff over the past sort of few years, and everything I've reviewed for them has been really sort of top quality. Uh, you know, I've had a, a few sort of tube mods from them, and the, um, what's it, the Trey Equi, or something like that, I can't remember what it's called now, but like a, a mechanical mod that uses three uh, 18650 batteries. And again, you know, all, the to all, all the quality really was you know, high level stuff. Whereas this though, it just doesn't feel quite the same because it has got those little uh, sort of errors, let's put it that way. You know, it just hasn't got the same sort of high quality feel compared to some of his other stuff. But you know, it doesn't mean they're all going to be like that. You know, like I said, plenty of people have been posted to say how happy they've been with theirs one. So it could just be a case that I've been unlucky with my one, but nevertheless, you know, I can only review what's been sent to me, and if I do notice little things that are wrong with it, you know, I am going to point them out. So, a quick break. Now, um, nothing to do with the build quality or the aesthetics or anything, but another sort of slight sort of caveat with uh, this device is the area where you're going to screw your atomizer on because it is a sunken design so the atomizer does sort of sit slightly inside the actual device and that top sort of uh, circle is well according to my calipers is is exactly 23 millimeters in diameter so if you've got a 22 mil atomizer you know it's perfectly fine because you, you've still got a little bit of area either side as you can see on here you know the air holes are slightly covered up you, well, you won't be able to see it from here, but the air holes are slightly covered up. But because you do have a gap going around it, it doesn't affect the airflow whatsoever because you know, air can still get in nice and easily. Whereas if you had an atomizer, <coughs> excuse me, 
that was no I said 22 and a half mils obviously you probably could go up to sort of 22.9 mils but you know it's going to start getting quite tight and if you do have the airflow coming from the base you are going to notice the airflow being in there quite restricted so now if you've got things like um was it the smock tf v4 you know i really like using the atomizer you know you, you can't screw it on there i think that's over 23 mils you know so it, it really is in my opinion just for sort of 22 mil atomizers especially if you've got a bit of airflow around the base if you've got like a rebuildable dripping atomizer where the air holes are a little bit higher up you know it's not gonna be a problem but any atomizer real, realistically over 22.5 mils is probably not gonna be uh, suitable for it right okay so let's um talk about a few positives now then uh, it does feel really nice in hand, it's got a lovely weight to it and the actual shape, you know, I'm not keen on the shape from a, an aesthetics point of view but the shape, you know, for sort of comfort and usability does feel really nice and natural in your hand, really nice indeed. It's got the, uh, the dual batteries in there uh, and they're in series so that's why a lot of the voltage is reading, I've just put a fresh set of batteries in there so it's reading sort of a... Uh, right about a little bit of eight so it's reading now 8.05 volts and um i've done a vlog a little while ago and i said and i did mention this uh, mod there and i said in that vlog you know i'd rather have the batteries uh in parallel so you're going to get sort of double the battery life now quite a few people say to me it doesn't really apply if you're using a regulated mod now if you've got a mechanical device if you've got your batteries in parallel then you in theory you're going to be getting sort of double the battery life and that's what I was thinking would be exactly the same for a regulated device but you know people who are more knowledgeable than me about batteries have pointed out that with a regulated device parallel or stacked the battery life is still going to be around the same so it doesn't actually apply I'm not too sure why that is if somebody could explain it to me that would be much appreciated but like I said these people know more about batteries than me so I'm going to take their word for it having said that though I am getting really good battery life out of this. I'm getting almost like a, a complete day's worth of vaping. That's, you know, I vape on average around sort of 50 watts with around sort of like, you know, 0.5 ohm builds normally. And with that sort of set up, you know, I'm getting almost a full day's worth of vaping. So I am definitely getting better battery life. Of course, I've got other uh, mods that use the SX350J V2, which are single 18650. And I find the battery life on those to be pretty poor, really. So, you know, for this, I'm getting the battery life, which has lost me a full day. So for me, that is a major, major thumbs up. Um, talking about the SX350J, when I first got this, it would go up to 150 watts. But uh, they have released a new firmware, 2.208, uh, which I noticed around sort of a week ago. And I've done the upgrade, so I can go up to 200 watts now. Uh, I'm never going to go up to 200 watts, but you know, if you are one of those people who likes to go that high, then that option is there now. Funny enough, I did actually uh, post on my uh, Facebook page a few days ago about how many people actually vape at those sort of wattages because this can go to 200 watts. Now you've got the DNA 200, which goes to 200 watts. The Rulo has just had an update that can go to 250 watts now. And so I was quite interested to see, you know, it's all very well and good having these high wattages, but who actually uses it? And so I posted on my Facebook page to ask, and um, I didn't have, well, I had one person reply to say that they vape over 200 watts. I think they actually said something like 280 watts, but that was on a unregulated device. Um, I'm not too sure uh, that could be a particularly nice vaping experience, but you know, each to their own. But the absolute vast majority of people were saying they vaped around sort of 50 watts. So, you know, for me, it's great you go to 200 watts, but it's complete and utter overkill, you know, 75 watts or, yeah, 75 watts, you know, that does be sort of pretty much perfectly, really. But, you know, if, if you are a uh, extreme vapor and you want 200 watts, well, you can do that now with the uh, SX Ray. Now, um, it does the, uh, the temperature control, and I've got to be honest, I'm just not interested in temperature control. You know, I have sort of had a go on it in the past with like the DNA mods and the, uh, the SX uh, electronics as well. Um, I'm just happy with verbal wattage. You know, I don't see any real reason to sort of go on to a temperature control, but you know, for those people who do like their temperature control, 
there really is a whole plethora of options for you. You can sort of even put in things like um, temperature compensation, uh, the coefficient. You know, you can really sort of go to town with all those sort of uh, temperature control options. But for me personally, you know, I do much prefer my variable wattage. So I'm not going to sort of talk too much about temperature control. I don't really dabble with it, you know, extensively. There's other people out there who've got all the proper testing equipment as well, so I can really tell you how accurate it's going to be. So, you know, do a quick Google. And if you want to know more about that sort of side of information, I'm sure you're going to find a video that will tell you. I'm sure uh, old Phil or Pete Pizzardo has probably got a video on it. The um, the buttons on it, uh, you know, they work. For me, they're more of like a like a, a practical sort of button, really. There's nothing sort of fancy about it whatsoever. It's quite hard to tell what material it is. I've got a feeling they may be the sort of anodized aluminium as well. They sort of feel like the same sort of material, but it is quite hard to tell. But, you know, they work perfectly fine. You press the button down, it fires up your coils. It's all nice and responsive. No issues there whatsoever. Now, if you do like the SX uh, 350J or V2, and you after the device is going to give you some really good battery life as well, then like the SX Ray, you know it, it could well be up right up your street. Like I said, my one does did have a few little uh, niggles, which uh, is a real real shame because, like I said, JD Tech stuff that I've reviewed in the past has been sort of like really sort of top notch uh, with regards to the quality. So it's a real shame that you know I have to talk about little negatives. But like I said, if I find them, I'm going to tell you about them. Uh, if you can put those things to the side, it is a nice mod. Aesthetically, not my sort of cup of tea personally. I have seen far nicer looking versions of the same mod though, with a nicer sort of lighter coloured wood and more wood rather than sort of, um, yeah, well, more wood than acrylic. And for me, the appearance just looked fantastic. I think it looked even nicer, even this one, if the anodised aluminium was actually sort of a nice sort of brush stainless steel thing, it'd really make it pop. Not too sure what else I can really uh, tell you about. If you do fancy trying out for yourself, you can go along to the Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash jdtech168. Or if you're in America, you can go along to dragonsdenvapor.com. Thank you very much for watching and also come along and visit the website at ecreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.